All right, I think uh, I think we're recording. This is Cody with Ironverse Comics here to do uh, my first and hopefully not last uh, crowdfunding comics corral. Let's see how this goes. Um, basic idea is, you know, just go through some uh, crowdfunding comics I've been seeing recently and uh, talk about what I like, and what I don't like, and. Um, Hope you uh, help you get exposed and help you decide whether or not uh, you want to jump on the on this bandwagon. Uh, indie comics, especially crowdfunding comics, have have been a thing for a long time, but but recently, um, at least myself, I just dove in and been feeling the extreme energy, and uh, I, I I really do want to add to it. Alrighty, so so right right now we're gonna start with uh, Movie Men, Crowded Theater. Um, you'll notice uh, a lot of these <laughs> titles I'm going off. Um, I will have an implicit bias. <laughs> I got to announce it right away because a lot of them are under um, Wicked Publishing, uh, my publisher. But uh, hopefully you'll see. I'm going to be be pretty dang honest on on my thoughts and uh, hopefully not brutally honest. Um, but we'll 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 see. And um, let's just go go right into it. So um, Jeremy Lott's been running a pretty decent campaign. He's almost there. We're very stoked about that. Tagline. Monsters have escaped from the screen. Can Bellingham's best ticket takers get them back? So, um Yeah, let's let's go uh let's go look. What could be more mundane than earning spending money, tearing tickets and selling popcorn at the local movie theater? And what could be more fantastical than monsters escaping from the screen? Five youths are picked by fate to save innocent people from a great movie menace. Will our young heroes prove up to the challenge of dealing with mummies, dinosaurs, and other real, I like that pun, real monsters? Or will the curtain fall on them? So, Movie Men's a pretty simple concept. I like it very much. It's last action hero but a little bit more um I, I i've been feeling uh you know when i look at this i feel it's going to be a, a slightly silly tone as, as somebody who hasn't read it um it's got an old school kind of comic feel to it which is great i i love i love that old school kind of feel <laughs> don't look like they have that easy of a job either so that's good you got to keep it interesting um lettering seems solid art solid and, uh, you know, <laughs> classic movie tropes brought to life. I really do like the idea of taking Last Action Hero that, that step fo further forward. Um, prices seem reasonable. Um, pinups, let's see. It doesn't list what the pinups are on there, so let's see. I bet it's this. Uh, do, 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 do. Yep, yep, yep. You also get two pinups. You get this one, and probably this one, or is that the cover? I think that's just the cover. So, uh, yeah, I'd check out Movie Men. Uh, it's looking to fund. I, I really hope it does. Uh, it's a great uh, addition to Wicket's catalog, and I'm, I'm excited to uh, see how far it goes. Uh, check out Movie Men if, if it seems to interest you. Um, negatives, I guess, I, I'll go on to now. Um, the art style is not going to be for everybody, um, and the theme is not going to be for everybody. Uh, uh, but it looks like he's working on the execution to make it even closer for everybody. So that's that's where it goes. Um, his artist seems to frame the scenes real well. Flows good. Sequential bits good. <laughs> and he did scream bomb in a crowded theater. Yeah, that's that. Ooh, it was a bomb though, so he, he wasn't wrong. Alrighty, uh, if you want to see what what happened there, I I recommend checking out Movie Men. All right, on to the next. Spork man, old buddy, old buddy of mine since I started running Jack. Uh, been having a harder time than I'd think from from his his real fun um, premise and and the the um, enthusiasm that gets behind it. I I, I really would expect uh, the finances to to show up. And uh, once I get to the end, I'll talk about a, a few of the things uh, that I think may may be contributing to that. But uh, let's start with what what I did last time. So let's just do an overview. Uh, worlds collide as East meets West in a comic that is an homage to both American and Japanese culture. Sporkman goes to Japan. Makes sense, right? Uh, if you want to watch the videos, of course, please go go visit their campaign. That's kind of why I'm doing this, so so make sure you go ahead and do it. Um, 
segment from from uh, the poster you'll get. Uh, another segment from another pinup. That's uh, that crafty foxy's color work. Um, Sporkman has been released. Uh, Sporkman Ghost Japan was released a, a while back um, in a black and white version. I actually purchased uh, a long time ago and loved. Um, so uh, you've got to. Uh, you know, check out that Crafty Foxy's colors on it. It really does bring it to life. Uh, reading the black and white is, is fine. It's got a manga feel to it, but once you kick in the, the, the Western kind of solid bright colors of this, it, it really makes a difference to me. Um, yeah. All right, let's go on down to how he pitches this. So, it's 91 pages. Um, you can get it in trade paperback or, or the single floppies. Uh, yeah, here we go. Let's just go with this. Uh, let's go with his pitch. After joining the Superhero Exchange Program, Sporkman journeys to the land of the rising sun, where it turns out that Japan is exactly how all us Western anime and manga fans imagine it being. We've got strong female characters, massive robots, ma oh, massive monsters, giant robots. Oh, okay. Good, good distinction. Anthropomorphic characters, speed lines, and supervillains? Check. Yep. Alrighty, so it, it, it really is a manga-themed set of books, which is great. Um, I like seeing that style. Sporkman fits in a lot of different styles, being a real... <sighs> I, 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 I enjoy the power of the Spork. I, I don't know what it is, but uh, something about Sporkman really... Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's the wholesome nature crossing into comedy that I don't see to this flavor often enough, and I think I, that's, that's what's really uh, got me since the beginning, since I first started seeing Sporkman. So... Looks like they took off a little bit there, but you can get a, a t-shirt, the poster, and a trade paperback, 45 bucks, probably plus shipping. Um, yeah, there's estimated shipping. There's a lot of good uh, good tiers. The prices are distant, uh, decent. So I guess now, now I'm going to go on. I mean, there's some gorgeous, gorgeous artwork. The, the trade paperback cover, my God, it, it's it's so nice. I really... I really like that. And the poster's great, too. There's a single issue if you're going to get it, and then those that's uh, the coloring in progress. But, okay, let's go on to, to the main negative I see that, that's holding it back uh, this time. Because I know uh, they, they ran this campaign before, uh, last year, and um, it made more, but it was not this. So they didn't make anything. And this, this is a double-edged sword this right here. So in in, in Chuck's case here, uh, Mr. Benetti, um, they have most of the work done. They just want to get colored and possibly relettered. Uh, I think at the moment it's, it's mainly colored. And, and they want to get it collected with, with this trade, trade paperback cover. And I, I think that's awesome. So um, there's, there's very little work that needs to get paid for. It's mostly printing, uh, shipping, and then the coloring is the work that needs to get paid for. So that's what this is going for and I think he chose flexible because that that way he can you know uh, uh, cover uh, personally whatever they they don't make and, and at least you guaranteed get something and I believe that's Chuck's goal is, is is no matter what you know you with a flexible campaign even if you don't make it I, I believe Chuck's goal is uh, uh, the, the reason this has gotten so far is he will get you your issues um, that's the worry about flexible is that that uh, somebody cannot reach their goal get the money and then not deliver but the difference is uh, between uh, flexible and then uh, the fixed is you know fixed is kind of similar <laughs> except they never get the money uh, to even try to get you what you want if, if they fail but um, yeah it, it, it's a it's a tough one flexible made me rethink on this many many times um, just from a just from a theoretic, just from a, a basic standpoint, it's like that money's gone, even if they don't get everything they need to get everything they need done, and that's worrisome. But um, in, in Chuck's case, in Sporkman's case, I I I know they have an uh, the team Sporkman has an extreme passion for the character, and they want they want the best for the character and best for their audience, and they they've got a good audience, and they've got a good. Um, a good premise, and I, I, I wish them all the best, and hopefully this, this might help you decide. Uh, as you can tell, there's as of recording this, there's not too long left. I'm hoping to maybe be on a stream with him tomorrow to help him promote, so uh, catch us then, or at least uh, definitely catch him then, if, if some reason I can't make it. 
And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and move on. Um, Wicked Publishing again. Publishing Sporkman goes to Japan, so you can guarantee it's getting printed and shipped, folks. Uh, Wicked, Wicked's had my, my and Jack's back since the beginning, and they've done good. They've gotten our backers what they need, and with issue two, we'll, we'll actually be fulfilling everything. And so that'll be a real trial between me and them. I'll have more to say after that. <laughs> Probably, hopefully, hopefully good. Um, but we'll see. You know, life, life, life throws speed bumps. But, but, Sporkman's got got what got the infrastructure it needs to hit hit. So if you like it and want it, come and back it. They need it. We need more creators with 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 the energy that comes with Sporkman. Um, the the friendliness and the 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 um, wholesomeness and and the the connection to to superhero roots that we don't get so often anymore. Everything, uh, including Jack, everything's got to be gritty, or or silly, uh, and over silly, not uh, campy. And Sporkman's very campy, and I miss camp. All right, so that's Sporkman. Now we're gonna go on to another one that's uh, also under Wicked, called Wrath. It's having a little bit harder of a time. But you know, uh, the the guy's starting on a smaller for uh, a, a, a bit more of a back foot, um, not too much marketing. Um, the logo, I, I enjoy the logo. So uh, let, let's see how he pitches it to us. So there's this wonderful image of this spectral wolf. That's that's very cool. I don't know if it's a wolf with a bob like that. Some kind of spectral uh, canine. Um, it's a six-chapter graphic novel, Wrath is, <laughs> that tells the story of a young man that discovers he has the ability to manifest his childhood trauma into physical form. Aha! Uh, the first chapter is 45 pages. That's pretty damn good. Uh, introduces the, the main characters. And uh, it's an origin story. All right, just a second, folks. I got a cough. All right. Um, those are your two mains. Um, uh, let's see. One of the things Wrath is that while we don't have any control over some of the things that happen to us, or the emotional psychological toll they take, we do have a choice on how we let those guide us in our lives. Do we let them drag us down, drive us to seek revenge and hurt others, or do we use them to make a difference and help protect those in need? That's a classic hero trope right there. I, I, I respect that a lot. I like that. Um, we don't, we do get that, but um, not so succinctly. I'm, I'm, that, that was a good way to pitch it to me. I like that. Um, here's your artist. It's going to be Grayscale, which is, I like Grayscale. Um, Bruce Patton, who's done a lot of fan art um, for Jack, does Grayscale. It's a good look. Um, I tend to go with act pure black and white for for um, our releases uh, that are uh, not colored, but um, grayscale is a good look. And this artist, I, um, good perspective, good lines. It, it it draws me right in. The the lettering's solid. It's a little uh, well. I'll I'll get into. Um, it's that it's not a question on the artist. It's a question on framing the setup, I guess. Um, but but that's that's not even really necessary. Uh, it looks good. Let's see. Um, and I think it's the s the, the usual wrists. Um, it's good that they have their publisher. Um, Wicked can carry a lot of the burden to get this out to folks. And again, I'm I'm proud to have them uh, doing this for indie folks. Um, fulfillment quality, of course, that's that's again on them. Um, yeah, so it's it's it seems like your main hinge to to get this is if you like that this um, right here and it's a wonderful concept I, I like it I, I, I love that concept and and it's gonna be filtered through some wonderful looking um, looking art uh, I'm assuming that's that's the beast that this young man manifests and that's uh, that's very neat uh, okay so we're gonna go on to the to the other the the negatives uh, be good to have a campaign video I didn't with Jack until two-thirds of the way down at the campaign, so I can't blame him there. Um, the logo solid, it, it hooks you. Uh, but when people are looking at this, I, I, I personally wouldn't mind a little bit more, um, even if it's just a couple page slides or whatever. Again, I, I, I haven't done on Kickstarter, so I, I don't know the, uh, the tools you're working with to be able to present that stuff. But, uh, yeah. Um, going down, though. Uh, it, it's... Um, 
it would be nice. I mean, just little things that would be nice. Uh, it'd be good to have some picks attached to these. Again, I don't know if, if Kickstarter allows you. we got a Kickstarter campaign coming up uh, that I'm going to look at right after this that's been really well set up and, and sold, so we'll see if see if the tool's there. But um, I am excited for this. I want to see it do really, really well. Um, again, the lettering's solid. The art's solid. Um, and 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 I'm hoping he tells a good story. Uh, the issue with this is that it, it it really didn't tell me enough to to really get its its claws into me. I I would really have liked to feel this thing on the back of my neck. That that would get me to buy it. But uh, I am planning on backing this one here um, shortly. Uh, it is an all-or-nothing campaign, folks, so there's not much of a risk if you have the money just sitting around and are interested. It's always, um, I'd always like to see more and more support for indie creators. The more teams, the more work that's being put out, the more people can be entertained and, and have some wonder and imagination put into their lives, where sometimes it's quite lacking. And <laughs> yeah, we all need those those bits of escapism and, and ways to look at hard things different ways. And that seems to be what he's trying to do here, is, is convey that very, very powerful thought um, right here through a, a whole series. And that's, that's a hell of a way to do it, and I, I look forward to seeing, seeing him do it. All right, that was Wrath. On to the Mythoverse. So it looks like you can just put up a video or a picture. Uh, it doesn't look like you can scroll through them. So there you go. That's one of them. Uh, yeah, Chuck's back to Mythoverse. I back Mythoverse. This, this is a this has been a great campaign, a long time time coming. They've been marketing this thing before running it for four or five months beforehand, giving us snippets and, and hooking people into to this nice trinity here of, of characters. There's a lot, a lot there. It's it's one of uh, the most vital um, in terms of vitality. One of the most vital. Um, it's, it's a shared comic universe, so I don't want to use series because there's three series, but it's it's um, most vital projects under Wicked. It, it has so much life and so much love to it, and it's been a pleasure to see. Um, let's see how they pitch it, because I think they did a great job with this campaign, and um, I'm hoping they're tracking to make their goal, but let's uh, let's get them over their goal. I, I'm not sure how they're doing three comics at, at that price. <laughs> I, uh, I I was barely able to do uh, two with with an extra 2,500. So I would like uh, I'd like them to have that extra spending cash because the Mythoverse is something I want to see more and more of. It they really have the heart and soul for it. All right, so let's have them pitch the Mythoverse to us. Number one, just wonderful. I believe that's the artist for Adobe Kroger. Um, this young woman's uh, the the main character, uh, Adobe Kroger. <laughs> um, but but yeah, that's just a, just amazing art. Not for that freaking dragon, my God. All right, I'm gonna go down. So welcome to the Mythoverse. It's a brand new shared comic universe brought to you by Wicked Publishing and the creative team of Dan Sakharo, Matt Trin, and Brett McGowan. Prepare to step into a rich, fully realized, modern fantasy universe filled with excitement, magic, adventure, romance, and action, uh, and populated with living, breathing, and genuinely relatable characters. The stories that can be told in this universe are quite literally and limitless, and we'll be launching with these three tales, each written in a distinct genre and drawn in their own distinct style by an exceptional team of artists. So yeah, let's pitch the three books, because yes, there are three books. You, you gotta know each because I believe you can pick one, or you can get all three. So first off, they start off with Changeling, Brett McGowan's uh, project, and uh, the wonderful team. I've worked with Ginger Foxy on Jack number two, and uh, had a few other art pieces. She's wonderful. And uh, Victor's art is very solid. Um, there should be an image loaded here. Uh, it could just simply be my computer. Uh, yeah, I don't have the thing that would usually block that, so I apologize, Brett. There should be a sweet, cute picture of Maeve right here. <laughs> but uh, let's go. Uh, let's oh, 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 right here. So maybe that is just a break. That could just be space. I don't know. But here you go. Here's here's the cover to Changeling Number One. It's a wonderful work. I, I, um, the the cover concept too really fits into the uh, to the story. All right, so let's uh, let's have. Uh, it pitched. Young Maeve has never really fit in. 
And now she must contend with the fact she is a changeling, part of both our world and the mystical fey realm. Can she successfully reconcile her banshee heritage with her Christian faith? Yeah, changeling is a young adult book, which is great. Um, there's not too many of those out there anymore because they're all uh, uh, adults trying to make it into Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, but no, no, people are out there making comics, and this is a great one. So, there's the cover, and here's an inner art piece. Again, uh, the colors are vibrant. I really appreciate those. Uh, another page. All right, now we're going to move on to uh, Dobie Kroger. Dobie Kroger is a young and inexperienced holy knight charged with leading her very first mission to rescue a group of innocent girls from a depraved hedonistic cult. Uh, just give me a second. All right. <laughs> depraved hedonistic cult. With a heavily troubled past, her inner demons are often far more difficult to smite than the fresh flesh, <laughs> fresh, the flesh and blood kind she must face in the course of her righteous duties. Follow her as she uncovers the truth behind a dark conspiracy and confronts her deepest rooted doubts about herself. Dobie Kroger is intended uh, for mature readers. And again, uh, an amazing cover. Just, just look at that. Yeah, that's right. She took a bunch of bullets. And she's about to stab you. I love it. Here's some inner artwork. Again, I love. It looks like the art is all s is going to be heavily inked. I don't want to call it um it's black and white for sure, but it's got this gorgeous heavily inked look. Uh, I I I love that. That's very cool. Um if I could get a touch of red in there, that would be my thinking. But then it's too sin city, so I don't blame him. <laughs> this looks good though. This looks good. It's just wonderful stuff. All right, and then the third title, written by uh, Mythics, written by Matt Tran, with art by Beth Varney. In a world which unauthorized use of magic is practically a capital crime, what can be a what can a brilliant young, magically inclined woman do when charged with dealing with paranormal entities that plague the mundane world? She must rely on her wits, her encyclopedic knowledge, her resourcefulness, and her ever-present and faithful familiar. Join Elthea Fletcher as she attempts to maintain the balance between our world and the ever-shifting threat of the supernatural. Mythics is also intended for mature readers. So the only one you're really going to want to share with your kids right away is Changeling, but let's look at this gorgeous work with Mythics. Oh, is that a Changeling, in fact? There's a little hint to the shared universe, I think. I think, I think. And yeah, um... If I had to pick a single tile I'm most excited about, it is Adobe Kroger. I just really like that art style. <laughs> and I like that she, she seems to be a uh, a very belligerent woman. And I, I, I want to read that. But uh, Changeling has a lot of hype. Maeve is adorable. Her, her character design is great. And her personality, I'm sure, will be uh, shown to be something equally as special. This looks like one of the moments maybe she finds out she's a changeling. I, I have I, I don't know. You're gonna have to go and buy to find out. Ah, I like I like the the, the onomatopoeia work. It's it's it, that's very cool. <laughs> I like that a lot. Alright, um so that's that's mythics. There's very little I, I would criticize on this campaign. They've they've done done great work. Um, there's a few things on the art side I'm not the biggest fan of uh, for a couple of the titles, but it's all professional work, and it all looks great, and all delivers what they're trying to deliver, and for a first batch of indie projects, that's that's incredible. Uh, good luck, fellas, and uh, hope to see you on the other side uh, well above that goal. Alright, now to one that's already been funded and is in demand that I kind of wanted to show how to run a really, really solid campaign just out of nowhere and get it done. And that's Wampool. <laughs> Journey of the Wand. Another OG uh, in my comic trenches from, from when I started, like Sporkman. Uh, incredible story behind Wampool, a lot of it, but I'm going to focus on uh, the comic. And you guys can decide from that. But uh, the personalities involved really do add a lot to it, and I, I recommend going to follow um, <laughs> both these fellas. Um, Josh the Amazing Animator, I'm pretty sure it's still at Morden Knight. Um, maybe I'll go and link those in the description later. And uh, at Mr. Marvel, gotta, gotta check out Mr. Marvel. 
All right, so let's go. Uh, let's let's go on down and talk about Womp Pool. So as you can tell, it's been funded. They've actually gone almost fifteen hundred over. Uh, oh, it's not over. I think their budget was ten. I think that's what they were shooting for. Maybe even lower. It doesn't say what what they were shooting for. Interesting. Nonetheless, they they've exceeded it and continue to to grow daily, which is just outrageous. And look, uh, almost four hundred backers. Another nearly thirty since uh, another twenty seven since uh, since they funded. I mean that's that's great. All right. <laughs> uh, so this is this uh, this uh, Wampool released digitally a long time ago on Comic Central last year for a n nice little extra cast infusion for for Troy, uh, Mr. Marvel, uh, when he when he probably needed it a little bit. But now it's time. It was time. It was finally time to get those physical copies in our hands. Uh, Troy is an extremely talented tattoo artist, and as you can see, comic book artist. And uh, it's been amazing getting to know the guy and and, and watch his work. Uh, Wampu is the first body positive Hispanic bisexual superhero, and I am very happy to <laughs> to be sharing the comic space with, with Jolly Old Juan. He uh, he's he's really is a, a quite a, a lovable character, and. Uh, it started off as a, a, a parody and became a parody book that, that's one of the standouts in indie in terms of parody books and I'm 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 excited that it's it's been doing so well. So anyway, you'll see from the start there's this wonderful video. Uh, Mr. Mobble pitches it himself from a social media uh, standpoint at, at one point a, a nice little uh, tiff that was going on. Um, but yeah, let's go into it. So so here's some of his art. Wonderful art. His coloring especially always gets me. It's very vibrant. Very uh, and his line work's very unique too. His line work. Um, all right. Anywho, so yep, <laughs> that's a classic. In fact, that shirt right there is available in the campaign. Yep, still available. Look at that. Twenty six people are wanting to be asked about their shit post agenda. Uh, you should probably join that. All righty. So let's talk about. Uh, here we go. This is a bit. This is what we need right here. Meet one Quintanilla. A hero watcher in a world inhabited by mass superheroes and villains. When one's favorite heroine, Badger Babe, suddenly goes missing, replaced by a strange doppelganger, one sets out on a journey to find her. The three-part series, Journey of the Wand, follows, follows Wand's transformation from meager internet e-celeb to the most unlikely of superheroes, Wandpool. Uh, yeah, I'll read this part too. The evolution of Wanpool from concept to the page has been an incredible story. Originally created as a meme for a tongue-in-cheek contest for a YouTube channel, very true, Wanpool quickly gained a life of his own as a fan favorite and eventually became Troy's very first self-produced comic book. Created while on hard times, living out of the back of his car, Troy's first effort would go on to be nominated for Comic Central's Comic of the Year Award, where it consistently holds a spot in the top ten. Yes, it does. Now, with the backing of the Science Wizard Comics label, Troy could finally do what less than a year ago seemed impossible. Do a print run. Which is so cool. So they're funded. Everything's here. If one pool as a story and as artwork uh, interests you, snag it. You, you won't regret it. Um, there's a poster uh, also been done. I've, I've seen snippets of. Um, that's just gorgeous by the uh, artist for uh, the Rags comic book, uh, Luigi. Um, it's going to look it's the same art style as that and ain't that. <laughs> it, it, it's wonderful. Um, and I, th I believe there's another pinup, too, that they did. There might be three pinups. I, I, I don't know what's listed here. There's a lot of extras. They've been, they've been running this campaign hard, and it's just wonderful. Here's some early pages of, of issue two. Again, his coloring really tends to stick out to me. Uh, it's just wonderful. And, uh, yeah, I mean, how to run a, a, a professional campaign. They, they, um, <laughs> they hit it hard. They they hit the marketing hard. They hit the fans hard. They found artists and ran fan card contests, uh, much like Mythoverse is doing. You have to consistently engage the community and find new and other ways to hook people who have never heard of you. And and they've done a really good job about that. It helped that um, Troy himself uh, had a good fan base <laughs> for a while there for his internet personality, but. A lot of it was how far forward and and how how powerful and strong out the gate they they kept this running. Uh, I think that's really important. Is that you have to keep the pressure on, or else people start feeling like less and like less like they need to uh, back you. But if you continuously put the pressure, even if you're funded, you're gonna find that backing if if you've got quality. If you've got quality. All right, so that was Wampool. Wonderful work. Now, let's go outside of Wicked.
<laughs> one pool's outside of Wicked, to be fair. One pool science wizard, another amazing uh, uh, label started by th this this man who's who's been a great friend too. Uh, but let's uh, stay out of the Wicked Sphere. Uh, Troy's actually working on a comic uh, <laughs> for uh, it's called Charger for for a young man under under Wicked. So it's it, it's in the family. But we're gonna go outside of the Wicked family and into a slight bit of the Jack family. So all of these, like I said, I'm gonna have a slight implicit bias. But uh, here we go. This this has been also uh, they they've done an incredible job uh, marketing it, uh, especially since it came out. Uh, unlike Wampool, I heard little snippets of it as it had been started. Uh, it's another second, Phil. Sorry. I had heard uh, snippets about it as as uh, the IP was kind of being developed, uh, but didn't see too much. But the artist I had seen a lot of and and had really loved uh, Rob Willis. His, his his line work was was quite incredible, and so I was happy to start seeing seeing something with it on it. And uh, as you can see from this short snip, small snippet right here of the cover, eh, eh, oh my God! So the colorist. <laughs> Um, is is I know him as a uh, at two b two d spaceman on Twitter. He actually ended up doing the line art for one of the pinups you'll see in Jack Art uh, Jack Irons number two. But um, I hadn't seen his color work like this. It's it's incredible um, on Shinobi here. So here's your pitch. It's a master ninja werewolf Bigfoot. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah. That those three things. Yeah. <laughs> it must thwart an evil cult scheme to enslave the Pacific Northwest. You know like like squatches do. Great Guardians. Alrighty. So, let's do the overview. Nearly 80 years ago, a chance encounter between a Japanese ninja master fleeing internment camps. Oh! And the Curious Young Sasquatch would result in a decades long friendship and the first Bigfoot to ever become a ninja. Years later, the same Bigfoot would find himself in a fight with an ancient werewolf, leaving him cursed with lycanthropy, because of course that would happen. Now, Shinobi Sasquatch, the Pacific Northwest's most fearsome protector, must race against time to save the whole region from an evil cult bent on enslaving it. So, that's awesome. The artwork is awesome. It's going to be 52 pages of pure awesome. People believe it's going to be that awesome. They had asked for quite a lot for their first run, and they, they nailed it. I wouldn't have dared ask for that much, and, and they f fucking owned it. And that is so cool. Um, two copies of the book for 40 A little expensive for a digital, guys, but, you know, however, it, it sold, so I don't blame you. Uh, there's your book. Average comic price uh, when you're doing crowdfunding. I, I rarely see anything smaller than that. Uh, not even with with wide var variances on page count, of course. Uh, but but that's that's the average price, and I kind of hope it stays that way for a little while. It's it's expensive, but it helps the team get what they need what they need done, and it keeps the books kind of on small limited print runs, which keeps them kind of valuable if they're really good and people want them. So that's good. Um, yeah. So this is what I want to do is get into this art. This cover is fucking amazing. I adore it. You can see he's already slayed something odd and mean looking. <laughs> Pieces of something too. Uh, we've got this kid. I don't know the kid's role yet, but he's got me interested. You can tell this guy's part of the main bad guy. He's part of that cult, which we believe, which it looks like the snakes are too. And that logo. It could be hard a little bit to read, but man, does it stand out. It reminds me of some old Arabian Nights kind of format to it, and somehow that really fits with with the with the swordsmanship of of, of our. Uh, eyebrowed friend here. And let's go into the end page. Uh, this lettering I think is actually going to change now. They've got a uh, real famous uh, indie comic letterer. Um, they just hit the stretch goal to get him to letter it. So this will probably change even though it's fine. And I really like it actually. It's solid lettering. I, uh, there could be more is my guess. Let's just look at the art and the colors. It's a gorgeous book. It's a unique book. It's got that kind of art that like the Max and such has. That's I I appreciate. I need art that that has this this power to it. Um, this this uh, very visceral, very uh, little speed lines. Uh, it's just awesome. I I really appreciate this style of art. Rob, Rob's gonna go places, and I'm sure Cal's gonna go with him if 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 this project's any goddamn um, uh, uh, proof, because it's just gorgeous, and they've done so well with it. 
Uh, it's already funded again, much like Wampool, so you're not risking anything. You're probably you're gonna get your book. Um, I I wouldn't talk about any of these folks, any of these projects, if I didn't believe that they they a hundred percent are are fixed on getting you your project and your product. So uh, yeah, come check out Shinobi Sasquatch. Totally worth it. And now, just just for fair, I had to do it. We're gonna tear apart my campaign. We're gonna we're gonna rip it to shreds. <laughs> what I did wrong, uh, uh, what what needs to change for the next one, and um, hopefully you folks will get an idea where I'm coming from for any of the other critique over here. So first off, yeah, we made we made our goal. Our our goal, I believe, was twenty five hundred. Um, I just wanted to be able to pay for the line art for Jack Two. Um, that was hit. And then it was a fight for coloring Jack 1 and coloring Jack 2. And that was hit. Um, then it was stretch goals for pinups. And those were hit. Uh, in fact, uh, so much so I ended up having to stop commissioning them because I, I, we probably would have reached 7 or 8. And uh, So the campaign paid for 5. I'm throwing in an extra because of the patience. It's it's almost hitting the year mark. Uh, it's not cool. <laughs> so um, uh, the internationals, especially, they've gotten only the digital number one. So uh, I wanted to give a little extra. We we have another, <laughs> a whole another thing to include to a whole another read. So I'm hoping that'll help. Anyway, so yeah, that's that's one of the things. So so we we got our funds. Uh, my big mistake was closing the in demand store months early. Uh, I thought we'd get right into it, and I'd have it out in months. I was in a hurry. I wanted to get it out to backers as soon as possible, everything. And uh, my team has had life speed bumps, and uh, I had life speed bumps, and uh, it did not happen. But we're almost there. We're almost there to completing this, and, and, and hopefully going to the next and seeing if... Uh, if we fumbled or or not with issue two, and I think uh, the artwork and the the story and such uh, of issue two is outrageous. Um, people who are who got the book will enjoy the book. I just don't know if they'll enjoy the process that it took to get the book, and that's 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 a, a definite issue that I know how to improve. And we're going to start talking about how to how to do that. So I'm going to keep uh, pointing out the things I did wrong. First off, closing the in-demand store before it was actually at the printers. Don't do that. Collect as long as you can. Uh, you you need those backers. Second, so here's here's my overview. Real simple. Um, I didn't have any. Uh, uh, I only had the black and white stuff from issue one when it, when this started, and I I couldn't have done uh, print and a bunch of other stuff. So uh, this is my little pitch. Uh, it's a lot about me. <laughs> so I I wouldn't start like that like I did <laughs> but I, I wanted to show that it's personally important to me so maybe it's not a bad idea uh, and it's true it, it, from the beginning it was to build a comic universe and with, with the release of uh, Cactus Coyote on top of us uh, just last week it, or this week in fact I guess it's still it's Sunday uh, it's it's um, it's getting there we already have the two, two titles in it um, with, with uh, three more in the works that's, that's so cool and, and this this started it even with my mistakes so don't be afraid folks but uh, also avoid the mistakes of others and that's why I'm doing this yeah, see that that I cut that off, even though I said said it was till it was ready to ship, and uh, I thought it was gonna be ready to ship before it did, and I already cut it off. So that was my bad. Um, yep, you can still read the free uncolored. That's one of the advantages Jack had is that you knew what you were getting, just um, prettier. <laughs> you could go and read. Um, you could see maybe that's what we're thinking with other titles as we go along. But anywho. Yep, we earned our color. Uh, this was one of the big things. This right here. So when I started, none of these tiers included physical. Not a single one. And since uh, a few of them had been bought already by the time Wicked Publishing uh, took interest, all I could do is really just imply this. So there, were, there ended up being a lot of extra work. I ended up having to collect all the shipping ad addresses uh, personally. And I had to um, answer a lot of questions that, that would have been answered by the perk had it been set up from the beginning that way, or had I opened a different perk. My goal was not to alienate anybody who had already spent that money, and so that was uh, 
uh, on the twenty-five dollar one. I didn't want them to have to go and, and refund and then re. Yeah. So so that was the price we paid. Extra work, a lot of extra work that was unnecessary. Uh, next time I won't have to. Uh, again, thanks to these folks, I can actually start off and actually have the the price on me and stuff. Uh, this whole thing was a shot in the dark. It came out of a very very hard time in my life where I just needed something to take me away and uh, Jack's campaign very much did that uh, spent out uh, you know I'd spend 20 hour days on social media uh, hyping this for weeks at a time so it was uh, it was very much needed but I I don't envy and I, I don't think anybody should do what I did to to get this off the ground and hopefully this gives a couple tips on uh, where I made my mistakes and then yeah here was this yeah from budgetary concerns it's true, I had to stop. But we have, uh, we had, we ended up getting six wonderful teams, and and the work they put out is just so amazing. Um, you guys will hopefully uh, be able to see those pinups here after issue number two's uh, release. Uh, I wanted backers to see them first, uh, sp specifically physical backers. So um, until I start seeing the books posted, uh, you probably won't see much more than what I was doing before, which is uh, small sl snippet previews all right um again i wouldn't recommend this huge wall of text like i did either <laughs> even though it's editable um i pitched it very on a on a personal level i think is what i did and then i tried to sell sell the story of jack um if you want to check out jack get get sold it's easier to just go read it for free here or, or buy it on Comixology or Comic Central if you want the full color amazing version with uh, Matthias Laborde uh, ha having done those gorgeous uh, colors. But uh, yeah, um, another thing I would avoid. So with these two tiers, I ended up um, adding cameos a as part of that. Um, it was just implied. As you can see, it's not in there. Um, I don't think I even put it here anywhere. So I wasn't... I gave my word. That's that's the difference. Uh, it doesn't look like I, I, I put my word down on, on page, and, and that's what they were going for. But I did. Um, I had... Towards the, towards the end of it, I had um, been asking for that. So here's about $800 worth of... The, but, but yeah, limit your cameo tiers. <laughs> Um, basically, between uh, between these two, uh, what I did actually is um, okay. Really, at this level, you can tell me what I can do for you. That's what it was, and uh, and a few people asked for cameos. That's what it was. I didn't, <sighs> but yeah, um, we did do those cameos, but a couple of them were so background that it's hard to kind of tell. Um, two of them are not background at all. <laughs> they're really obvious, and they're they're. Uh, indie comic personality, so I hope you guys at least catch catch those too. But some in the background are going to be harder for folks to tell. Um, one guy actually got turned into an alien, which I don't know if he'll notice or not. <laughs> but hopefully he'll enjoy it. Um, uh, a young woman that's supposed to be in there, she's in the f one of the first scenes you see at the bar. She's kind of in the back. It's hard to... Maxie's art style for background characters um, leaves some room for imagination. It's wonderful. I love his art to death. But yeah, if you're going to be a background character, it's it's, it's uh, more difficult. Especially now, which uh, this art is five years older than the art you're going to see in issue two. Uh, he's started doing a different style. Um, how he renders anatomy especially has changed. But it feels very similar. It's the same world. It's the same Jack. It's it, If anything, it's more stylized and, and will leave more of an impression. <sighs> but yeah, um, those are a few of my mistakes, and uh, I hope you guys don't uh, don't worry about them. This was one. Um, I didn't expect too many to get them. I think we overcharged a little bit for bulk. That's something I'm going to have to rework. Uh, this one actually did have shipping charges and stuff because it was added late. Uh, once we knew it was going to get printed, we wanted to be able to deliver the, the books. But yeah, we stole 20 issues off of, off of that, so that's not bad. Um, my PC, see, that's why I, I kind of thought they were overcharging for the PDFs, but I released mine for free, so, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. Um, if you can make $12 off a PDF, make $12 off of it, I, I don't blame you one, one bit. I made 10 off of two, um, so we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Um, 
Ah, this is the main page I had to to show what our colors would look like. Fucking gorgeous. Not just the board is so talented. Our new um, colorist though for issue number two. Uh, I don't know if he he wants to call it called Estevan or or Steven or or Steven. Um, uh, Canon, but or or Kenyon. See, I don't I don't know either. <laughs> but uh, he's doing wonderful work. It it was real sad to have to um, let Matias uh, go go his own way. Um, just due to finances and stuff, he he needed to go back to his day job instead of comic coloring. It just it just wasn't enough. But um, it took us a long time. That was another speed bump. Is is uh, we we had to find the right colorist and the right one. I I went through six. I had to pay for preview pages and everything. And eventually we found the right one. But uh, you got to be prepared for the speed bumps. So try to work that into your budget too. Uh, I will admit this may. Have colored covered um, printing <laughs> may, uh, but uh, Wicked is taking taking care of printing and shipping costs. If they hadn't, I couldn't have done that extra pinup, and I probably couldn't have put out the printed books, as far as I can tell, uh, just because of shipping alone. Uh, international is going to be a hell of a thing. I recommend if you're running your first campaign, you do not include international shipping. I don't know if we made much because of international. You can open up your digital tiers easy to international, so you don't have to exclude uh, the world, but you you don't want to take on the burden of, of, of shipping worldwide um, like we did yet. Uh, it's just that the system's very expensive, and I don't know if, if, if it's profitable. It might be profitable for some larger creators who are going to sell a lot and, and make you know large amounts of profit, but um, already, but but for for little guys doing their first or second, hell even third, I I don't recommend uh, international. I don't think uh, we'll do an international tier with uh, Jack Three, which will also include uh, the ability to get one and two in case you folks missed that. And uh, with that, I think I've been talking a while. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop recording this. Um, I've been Cody with Ironverse Comics, commenting on a few uh, campaigns. I'm really interested in seeing their successes. Um, just give it my thoughts. Uh, if you guys have different thoughts, please tell me in the comments. Uh, subscribe, please. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try and do videos more often. I want to build the Ironverse Comics brand, and I want to get people involved, and videos is a great way uh, to personally connect to an audience. Um, our work tends to connect to an audience, but if you can put a friendly face and uh, a heart be behind that work, I think it can make a lot of difference in, in, in how it all goes. With that, uh, I think I'll just go ahead and uh, tell you folks I'll see you on that old Ironverse trail. I've been Cody, and I hope to see you in further videos. Again, sub. Uh, you can get Jack at Comixology and Comic Central. Just look up Jack Iron Steel Cowboy. Uh, Cactus Coyote just released on Tapas if you want a free manga read. Uh, it's fun, wacky, weird western action. And uh, yeah, take care, folks.